Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. Hashtag Mornis nice. Project. Uh-huh. Check it out. Syl Sebastian here joining us live on the Zoomcast and podcast to talk more about nobelia.org and all he's doing. And uh, how do I describe the Mornis Project to new time listeners, Syl? <laughs> Uh, that that you know, I I think probably the best thing with the Mornis project is not to describe it. Why? Because yeah. there's so much Mornis to it. You have to discover it for yourself. So Mornis is that which you attain when you're on an adventure, when you're exploring, when you're learning, when you're growing, when you're going deeper into things, when you're truly understanding, when you're knowing. Wow, oh, oh, that's a lot. Yeah, see why it's not described. Yeah, and Mornis culture. The culture of it is about having a culture which is an alternative to the standard, the typical, the default, which is superiority culture, narcissism culture. That's where we get it from, right? We we get our culture from narcissists. Think back in the day. It's true. How was culture back in the day? Where did it come from? It came from the feudal system. The feudal lord and feudal lady and whoever was in charge, right? That was the structure. They pushed culture. They Mm -hmm. said what you should do, what you shouldn't do, what was right, what was wrong, all of this. And that's the culture we live in today. Now, this came up in a very profound way, but I I have a short story to share. But before I do that, I just want to finish your your question. So mourners culture is saying, we're going to do things differently. In other words, I'm not out to climb the hierarchy and get higher and be obsessed with the status of being superior with everybody. And oh my gosh, it's such a strain and a stress. It's like the lions when they, they so kill the funny. buffalo, the zebra, mm-hmm. whatever. They all fight over the lion or over the carcass. <laughs> Seriously, lions? They you, do. You can't just cooperate and collaborate and go and kill another one and have more than enough for everybody. No. If you're at the bottom of that pecking order, you can go hungry, literally, and die, literally. Mm -hmm. So this idea of scarcity, but it's a false scarcity. There is no scarcity for the lions. It's just laziness, really, and lack of interest, and selfishness, and bubbleness. Selfishness, when it's uh, uh, negative, it's Mm short-sightedness. But true selfishness, which means I want the whole world to be better, because that helps me. That's mourners, right? So mourners culture is going deeper. It's going further. It's collaboration. It's sharing. It's not competing unnecessarily with people. Yes, I might agree to compete, but my reason is not to win. My reason is to stretch my boundaries. My reason is to grow. Me personally, I much prefer to lose, like if I'm playing tennis or squash or whatever, against somebody who's much better than I am because I learn my game improves. If I beat somebody who's not very good, yeah, big whoop, you know. Uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> big whoop. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what's the point? You know, it's like, come on. But, you know, I see people get so obsessed with winning that they play against children, like in games and stuff. And then I want, I want, and they do that, that little dance. And it's like, oh my gosh, you have no idea how you have come to accept this within a cultural bubble. And in some parts of the world, that behavior is nauseating, it's just appalling, right? To, to kind of rub it into somebody's face that you won. It's just horrible, yeah? Anyway, but see, Mona's culture says, no, we, we're not, what do I want to humiliate and denigrate and demean and be horrible to somebody? Uh, no, why can't we celebrate competing, not winning? Who cares who wins? It's about the competition, about growing. If you're going to do that, why can't we just collaborate rather? Ah, mm-hmm. see, now when I'm playing a game like that, I'm actually collaborating with somebody who's better than me. Yes, and their job is to play their best and to push me. Yeah, and uh, my job is to try my best and maybe to surprise myself and surprise them and grow and learn. And that that's a great joy. Who cares who wants it? Totally relevant. Totally God relevant. Bless. Isn't that awesome? It is. So and- this one. Yeah, and you know, mourners mourners culture is also. I mean, most cultures have some kind of a celebration of of kindness and generosity and cooperation, etc. I mean, that's part of most cultures. But also, you know, there's ambition. Yeah, well, in mourners culture, ambition is like, it's okay if that's really what you want to do, but it's what you want to do. Do it yeah. for your reason, not because you want the approval of others. 
What's the point of that? You just make yourself dependent on others. It's like, hello, seriously? You want to be the, your happiness is dependent on others? No, no, no. So mourner's culture, you're going for independence of being. Yeah, that means whatever I do, it's cool, right? And, mm. and I'm not just independence of being, meaning that I'm inconsiderate and I just do my own yeah. things. Like, well, I want to be a criminal. I don't care. I have independence of being. No. Yeah. So mourner's culture is also about being ethical and being honorable and being sensible and being thorough and looking at things in the bigger picture. Uh, and that's very key, right? So what, what underlines mourner's culture is the concept of appropriateness capital a appropriateness now we don't want to confuse this with proper you know it's astonishing joe that this concept of appropriateness i i once upon a time undertook uh I, just in 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 my madness i have to say that i'm i'm quite crazy in many ways yeah, i'm very very happy to say that so in my youth i decided to read all the classics in chronological order, right? I have to add that extra degree of difficulty. That's just how I am. Not just read them, but read them in chronological order. Now, this is pre-internet days. So you may sound, today we <laughs> say, well, okay, no big deal. Ha, huh, ha. Huh. Yeah. Just to the, the idea, because you hear about the classics, you know, Homer, Plato, and Socrates, and you yeah. know, Tolstoy, whoever, right? The whole range of it throughout the centuries. I mean, I skipped a whole bunch of centuries there, but anyway. Right, so we, we hear about these classics, but what are they? Um, and so I decided to read them. Well, there was actually, it started with an interesting read. I was reading um, Herman Hess, and Herman Hess kept referring to Nietzsche. And who's this Nietzsche guy? All right, so I go look up Nietzsche. And then Nietzsche keeps on referring to Schopenhauer and Kant and so on. I was like, no, man, come on. I don't want to be going round and round. And yeah. you know, everybody always refers to the Greeks <laughs> at some point. Of course. So I right? said, no, I don't want to be jumping around. Let me just do this thoroughly and go back to day one and read them all. Now, I didn't restrict myself to Western classics either because I never thought that way. I always thought global. So I wanted the classics from all over the world. I want to know what the other side you know, of the world thinks. I more or less have an idea of Western, but I want to know Eastern and Southern and Northern and whatever else mm -hmm. there was. All right, so now, like you say, today, this is not a big deal. You can go to Goodreads or wherever and, and look up all these books, right? Very simple deal. But back then, there was no internet. And there wasn't even specifically lists of these. And I had the, the uh, uh, it took me about a year to compile this list, okay. right? And I found like a, a, a catalog sheet from Penguin Publishers and they published Penguin Classics. And that helped a lot. And then uh, another sheet, a physical paper sheet, right? Like a promotion thing, a flyer from um, uh, Britannica, great books, like Encyclopedia Britannica. Mm -hmm. Published great books of the world. So I got a lot of help from that, but they weren't complete either. And then I asked people, like I asked my English teacher, and I'd left that school already. Well, I, was, I did this in my last two years of school. Mm -hmm. So the previous uh, English teacher, he was a good guy, Mr. Ackerman, used to call everybody Lassie. We called him Lassie, of course, because of it. <laughs> so I, 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 I went to, it was in a different town, right? So I'd already left the school. I went and knocked on his door in, in, the, in the old town. Oh, I, I think I made his life. Because when I came there and I explained what I was doing, he was completely blown away. But you could see on his face, ah, I got through to at least one. Because there was a bunch of Philistines in the class and, you know, they didn't really care much. And we did Shakespeare. Nobody understood a word of it. And, you know, <laughs> so he said, well, at least I got through to one. Anyway, so I put together this whole great big list and, and asked anybody that I could who read and, for suggestions and it's a long story that goes to it i want to cut short to the key point here so then you know i i had to go and acquire the books because i didn't want to just yeah. get them from the library because i wanted to underline in them and make notes because that was it was a pro I, I i didn't only want to know what the classics are but i also wanted to extract value that i could use that was my key intent. I wanted to extract things that I could use because a lot of people say wonderful things, but they don't tell you how to actually implement it. And then it's pretty useless without application, all that stuff in your head. It's just data that's sitting on your hard drive. You're not using it. I wanted to use it. You've got to apply it, right? You've got to install that update that you downloaded. You can't just download it and think, oh, now my computer's better. No, it's not. You've got to install it. Anyway, so I read this. It took me a couple of years to read all of the, all those classics. And here's the key. In all that reading, I mean, it was hundreds of books, right? Uh, 
and and uh, and all of that, not one of them has the concept of appropriateness. It's not in the Bible. It's not in the Quran. It's not in anything. It's not this concept of appropriateness. It's fascinating. We know the word. We use the word, but not as a philosophical concept. Not as a way of living. Yes. Now, um, in you talked about Nobelia, and Nobelia is a planet in my fiction story, and it's a it's a planet that revolves around a culture that revolves around nobility, revolves around mourners, revolves around learning and growth. It's a very very different culture, and it's it's part of a bigger you know it's in a, in a whole galaxy, and there's an agglomeration of many planets. So it's an it's a niche, it's an exception within that. So it's something, and they say this is not for everybody. If you're bent in life, if you mm -hmm. really love learning and growing. That's no bliss for you. If you don't, if you want to do other things, okay, then fine. Yeah, we're not saying this is better. It's just what appeals to us, right? So it's a niche, a niche. At any Got rate, um, this the, the 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 key point is that underlying all of this is appropriateness as a philosophy. And on Nobelia, there's only one law, for instance. That's one law, one word: appropriateness. Now, if you ever known people that are regularly get into trouble, right? And if you go down to the courts as well or in the jails, they all kind of know the technicalities and know the laws and they know how to squirrel around it. But if you make a law that just says appropriateness, uh, all of those who have that criminal mindset, are oh, they screwed. They, they, screwed. they all hate yeah. that. And I saw this. I, I've seen it in action, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I used it myself too in, in, in a roundabout way. When I was in the in the military, I had to serve two years conscription. So I was forced to go, right? It was yeah. two years, a long time when, you, when you're when you a young man. It's, it's an age, it right? It's an eternity. <laughs> it's, I mean, just, just even now, if you were to think, take two years out of your life, it's an age, right? Anyway, so at that time, you know, they would, they had, trouble up in the north on the border and there was military action except as a conscript he didn't see much but still so i didn't want to go up there but and and, and there's there are many ways to to be in the military and because they got lots of rules they also have lots of holes and if you know the rules you know how to get around them and i had a great time yeah. in those two years time because i understood the rules and mm -hmm. i knew how to kind of get around them right <laughs> so when i i had businesses i had four stores oh, once gosh. upon a time Wow. Uh, yeah. And so uh, employees and all this, right? And so I would say to the employees, only one rule, appropriateness. Oh, some of them absolutely hated this. Because likewise, you know, if you've got exact rules, then you can bend and you can make excuses and this and that. If it's appropriate, then it's open-ended mm -hmm. and you don't know where to go. So, but now when you consider appropriateness as a philosophy, you say, wow, wow, how does this work? Well, the, the question is, what am I doing in my life that okay. is appropriate? But, oh, wait a second. You said in your life. Oh, oh, Ooh. oh. You mean not just today, not just in, in my yeah. immediate surroundings, not just in my home, in my work, in my town, in my community. No, in my life. Oh, crap. Yeah, see, now, now it's like for some people that's a big deal because they know what they're doing isn't really going anywhere. Right? They're pursuing hollow ideals. They're doing stuff that's just indulgent. Uh, I mean, how are you really taking care of what you really want and what is appropriate? Now, how do you determine what's appropriate? Somebody might say, well, first of all, you got to know what you are trying to do. You have to know what your goal is. Because let's say I am I have the intent to be a hooligan. You say, mm -hmm. well, why would you want to be a hooligan? Well, go ask the hooligans. All right, I'm doing it to research for a movie and I'm, I'm playing the role and I've got to be a hooligan, right? And I'm really good at my job and I've got to go like, research what? tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try and be a hooligan. So, okay, <laughs> well, let's say I go to a funeral. Well, a typical funeral, well, I laugh my head off at everything that everybody says. Well, okay, I'm being a hooligan, I'm being disruptive, right? But if, I, if my intent was to go and be respectful, then I will maybe not behave that way. True. So the... Uh, I maybe behave the opposite way, right? Or let's say I go to a wedding and like I'm being a hooligan, I want to be disruptive and I'm crying and I'm upset. And you see my point, different circumstance, different context, the behavior changes depending on your goal. So you've got two factors that determine appropriateness, your goal, your objective, your intent, 
and the context. Yeah. So same context, different goals, different behavior, and vice versa. Right. So it all depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, again, like <laughs> take the way you dress. You dress appropriate to the occasion. But if you really want to stand out and be different, like I said the other day about going to the beach in, in nice formal wear, if you were modeling this and you're looking to advertise this, well, you want to get attention, okay, that, it's appropriate for looking to get attention if that's what your idea is. Right? So when we understand appropriateness, it changes so much and it, it makes life so much easier. But here's the thing, I've put appropriateness here in the context of sort of a immediate context and our physical surroundings. But we must also consider appropriateness in the full context of time. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. See, so this now, oh, 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 yeah. yes, yes. In other words, where are you going as an individual? Does this really, are you going somewhere or are you just doing whatever comes? And the next thing you know, you know, your life is halfway over and, <laughs> and suddenly, you say, oh, I'm behind the curve and now you got midlife crisis. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and that's serious. That's very serious, right? This is what midlife crisis is when people realize that what they thought was appropriate wasn't yes. actually. No, no, yes? no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you have to really consider your spirit or your soul or, or your moreness or your innerness or whatever it is, right? However your language is. And yes, the other thing that part of moreness culture is language. To use language and, and understand that when we say things that so often we might use different words, but we mean the same underneath. Yeah? And to not get stuck on the different words, which is particularness, but to get understand that zoomed out overview and bigger picture, the abstract of things. And then you find the commonality. So with, with mourners language, it's going past the words, going to the meaning, going to the understanding, going to the, mm -hmm. and thinking it out, thinking it through to the end and perspective shifting to multiple perspectives, not just going from black to white. What do you get? You end up living in a gray world, yes? Anyway, we have to remind I mean, people still how we contact you. Oh. Tell us how we do that, please. Yes. Nobilia.org slash connect. Very Perfect. easy. Very simple. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you for that. So I was saying, you know, I hear people say, oh, I'm a black and white thinker. And I say, oh, yeah, my commiseration. I'm sorry to hear that. And they're like, what? Because uh, we're very proud of being a black and white thinker, right? They, they really take this as a badge of honor. I say, well, if you're a black and white thinker, what typically happens is you end up living in a gray world. Not for me, thank you. I prefer color. Yeah. I prefer to be a color thinker. Yeah. Oh, oh. And, and, and you know, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be clever or snarky. I, I, I mean, I, I'm trying to make a very profound point because that really stops them. And they think, well, you know, I never really ever thought about being a color think it was always just this idea of black and white you know because black and white is associated with being yeah. kind of moralistic and and not having a gray area and all of this right but they don't think in color and so you lose so much in life by being a black and white thinker not everything has an opposite and some things yes they do it's a very convenient mechanism but we have to be careful of applying it to everything because then you get lost so mourners culture is absolutely about celebrating all the colors and shades and hues and tones and all the variety and variation that there is it's it's getting into the mourners of life right there's always mourners everywhere you now and it's not what we think it is. And one of the key understandings in mourners culture is that the world does not work the way we think it does. Yes, it's so true. But we are changing things. You are changing them, uh, you know, one yes. person at a time. And I love hearing yes. how 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 is that going? Tell us about some of the people you're working with. I mean, you do so much. And if you're a new time Wonderful. listener to know about your courses, your group outings, they yes, tell, us, yes, tell us what's yes, in store. Yes, yes. Now, you know, uh, my intent is not necessarily to change the world. My intent is to share mourners. Why? Because it's so super, super valuable, not just for me, but with those that I work with. And I rather go for quality than quantity. And so, for instance, somebody that I work with uh, who came and did the, the way of impeccability, the core uh, program that I run, it's a life change and a self-change program. 
And this is a, it's a long program. It takes a minimum of four months, typically a year. Right? And you come twice a week. So it's very intensive because if you really, truly, truly want to change, this is not something that you get yeah. to happen by reading, a, 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 doing a weekend course and reading a few things, listening to stuff, or even reading a book. It doesn't work. You have to apply it. You have to integrate it. You have to wow. change your ways of thinking. You have to change your habits. You have to change your language. You have to change your way of behaving. You have to change everything, your self-conception. So much that needs changing, right? And this is what Wave Impeccability is. Plus, Wave Impeccability, it gets you, you the one who does the change, not me. You don't, I, I ask the participants, please don't believe me. And some of them are like, what, what do you mean? You, you're the one who's doing the course. How can I not believe you? No, don't believe a word I say. Figure it out for yourself. You need to sign off on it. It needs to sit with you. It sits right with you. You need to be okay with it. Otherwise, it doesn't go into you. And you have to take what's presented and make it your own. You have to make it. If you don't make it your own, you don't incorporate it in the full literal meaning of the word incorporate. Take into the body you have to take it in that you feel it so now you are different mm -hmm. if you don't feel it you're not going to love it it's as simple as that yeah Gosh. very simple very simple so this this whole point is through this we come to see you asked me to tell you about people so yeah, i don't want to tell you so sure came on yesterday sure unbound ah. I, I give the participants a way of impeccability name so you know like like oh yeah i've got um uh erica uh, Erica Empowered or Robin Repainted and Show Unbound and so on. I don't know, just, just the way it comes out. And it's a very profound name. It's, it's, it's not, it, it, it comes, it, uh, it, it comes in, 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 in the most magical, mournest way. But it really makes a difference to the participants. Like Sure has developed a whole, Everything revolves around being unbound, right? Her mm -hmm. book's called Unbound, 100 Days. So and she, she's about to write a second book. So she came and shared to me yesterday about unbound logic, as it were, unbound thinking, uh, applying to grief. So when I met she, um, it was via she was doing another program, which was just imploded and it didn't go anywhere. But at any rate, she, uh, her husband had died and it was very rough for her. Not necessarily because of the, the husband's death in itself, but that it had left her in a complete mess. The financial situation and the mortgage and the insurance wasn't paid and all of this stuff, right? You've heard this before with people, right? The husband dies and, and leaves the, 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 or the spouse and leaves the other with a great big mess. But typically it's the husband because they're like, well, yeah, I'm taking care of it, but they're not doing it right. Yeah. So she was in this big mess and, and it was a very low point in her, in her life, right? And, and she heard something and she came out of it. But she was talking about, then she went for to grief, like, you know, grief groups and grief counseling. And so the, she came yesterday, she said she'd written things and she wanted to share with me. And what she was sharing was about the should of grief. And she said, you know, that uh, she's now doing a recap of what happened before. And she said what really bothered her was that she was being told how she should grieve. And she said, what? Come on. You know, and she she left that eventually. And then she, she found me and we did Wave Impeccability. And Wave Impeccability is all about you figuring out what's right for you. All I do is provide you the tools with which to do it. You build your own house. I just pass you the hammer. I pass you the screwdriver, the saw, the drill, the whatever. Right? That's my job. Is providing tools, not telling yeah. you what house to build. How can I? How can I tell you how to be? How can I tell you what to be? How can I? No, you can't. It's impossible. And anybody who does this, go elsewhere. Right? Yeah. You, 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 you're wasting your time because you're going to end up living their life. It may work for a while, but it's never going to sit and resonate with you. You're never going to be fully comfortable and you'll be miserable and unhappy. So this was the key point of what she was sharing. Uh, she was sharing. <laughs> I call her Sher, but she says share, you know, like share. Anyway, I, I just my pronunciation of it. But share was sharing, and, and she shares a lot. You can go look her up on Facebook, Share Unbound. Uh, anyway, so she said about the should of grief and how to grieve. And then we took it a little bit further, but that's mourner's culture. Maybe next time I can go into the mourner's of grief. And it's quite surprising when you think it through all the way to the end. I have a, I have a smaller program about... 
uh, grief specifically. It's about transition, really, and 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 it can apply to tra transitioning from a relationship, from a job, from when somebody's from death, you know, somebody's died, uh, any kind of a transition. Because when typically somebody dies that's close to you, there's some change in your life. But instead of having it be disruptive, we can have it be a transition, right? So the, the, the program is called Transition Through Change. We've got to go. Yeah. Time is up. So we've got to transition, right, Joe? Yes, I know. I love it. I love <laughs> it. We unfortunately have to go. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. So how yeah, do we no, reach out good. to you, it's fill us good. in? nobilia.org connect and you know you, i'm very easy to find you'll see all in nobilia.org many ways to get hold of me i'm very open so you can you can touch connect find out ask questions not a problem i'm, I'm Perfect. very open thank you so much for everything pleasure having you always Absolute still pleasure. thank Absolute you pleasure. wow you are it's always uh, fun you're... always fun so always i know fun. you always have fun. so much to say all the yeah. time and it's something yeah. new yeah. something inspiring real Love quick about real you. quick i Go forgot ahead. to mention if I have a second, uh, I got an email last night. Somebody is asking me to host a TV show. Oh, my a gosh. Talk show. So, Congratulations. Yeah. I want to hear more about so, it next week. Hope we'll have yeah. some more details. Thanks again. <laughs> Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.